Well, I'm here in the shortwave listening shack, and I've got the Zygu G90 hooked up to a battery and the uh, digital interface to my MacBook Air. And so I wanted to illustrate the process of connecting the G90 through a digital connection and doing FT8. So I'm running WSJTX, the latest version that runs on Mac. And we'll open that up. And um, I'm using the xggcoms.com isolated USB sound card interface. So there's a uh, PC uh, USB connector here that emulates, this device emulates a sound card. And then the other end plugs into the back of the radio, as you can see here in the accessory port. Now I've got my antenna hooked up. And I have the antenna tuned to uh, 40 meters. So we'll uh, plug in the power on the radio. And it has a fan on this. This is a fan, external fan on the G90. And I would recommend that if you're going to do digital, that you, you purchase this external fan because it will especially if you're running full power 20 watts, it's, it's going to warm up the radio. Um, so we're running right now. I'm tuned in to 7074. And uh, let me lift the radio up. <clears throat> and you can see that we're tuned to 70, 70, uh, 7.074, which is the FT8. And immediately when I fired up, it started receiving all of this data. You can see it scrolling on the screen. The green are CQs. And so we're gonna to respond to one of these CQs. Let's see, <clears throat> I'm not gonna to try to explain all of this uh, WSJTX. There, are, like I said, there are videos. There are videos. I can mute this because I don't need that chattering while we're working here. Um, but I'm just going to click on uh, one of these, and there's a lot of activity today. This one is 2,821 miles away. The call is CU5AM, and he's on the HM58 grid. And so we're going to enable TX, and we're going to uh, start transmitting. Let me see if I want this to be turned so you can see the transmit light. And then you'll see this right here turn yellow and, and indicate that it's transmitting. And there, uh, well, not yet. There we go. We're now transmitting. And uh, I'm putting out a full 20 watts on my uh, dipole antenna. So we'll just see if we get any response. That's a pretty good haul, 2,800 miles. So let's see if we get any response. It should show up in red here if they picked up. Um, I mean, if he answers my uh, response to his CQ over here on the uh, receive side, <clears throat> I'm going to call again. It's transmitting again. See here. All right. Receiving again. We could turn the volume on. Lots of CQ activity here. Okay, we're gonna send out the third call. I'm not gonna to continue to persist. There are plenty of other calls here that we can respond to, um, but we'll uh, we'll see if he actually answers us on 40, 40 meters. All right, we'll just mute that. I'm gonna go over the settings on the radio in just a minute but I want to just uh, demonstrate some of the activity here. Okay, so he's not gonna answer us. So let's halt that. Let's pick up another one. All right, here's one 4,070 miles, 79 miles away. We could look them up. I wonder, I've never used a lookup feature. Yeah, 
I don't have the call feature set up. So well, let's uh, let's set up a call for Echo Charlie Seven Kilowatt Whiskey. Echo Charlie Seven Kilo Whiskey, and uh, let's enable TX. All right, it immediately started transmitting, and let's see if he answers. That's four thousand seventy nine miles away. Oh, wow. <clears throat> there we go. Actually, we got the uh, the CU5AM refinally responded to us. So let's uh, respond to CU5AM. Signal was pretty low. Okay. We'll wait. I've sent him an R minus 10. I received his signal at minus 10. And uh, I'm waiting for him to send back an RR73 that he acknowledges. Uh, and I'll continue to send that signal report until he acknowledges it. We're still transmitting every 15 seconds or so. And uh, I'll continue to transmit that report to him until he uh, acknowledges that um, he's got my signal report. And then that completes the cycle. So, so far, he hasn't acknowledged it. But if he's a long way away and if he's really busy, like we saw here earlier, um, lots of activity here. Um, he may be busy answering other calls on other frequencies. So uh, let's see, that was way back when I initially called him. And I don't even, there, there it is. Yeah, it was way back. So we're going to continue to send that signal report until CU5 AM responds. Now, um, let's see, is there any of the CU, you no. Know, don't see any other activity from him so you know sometimes it's the band up and down and uh, it's a little um, it might be a a reason why he's not responding immediately so we're just going to continue to send that report all right after this transmission I'm going to stop All right, so let's halt, turn off the uh, transmit, and let's pick up one of these other ones here. Here's one, uh, 1,500 miles. Let's see if we can get him. KPMAQ, KP4MAQ. So we're going to continue. He's calling CQ, and I'm responding, so we're probably not hearing each other. His signal is all over the place. His was minus 12. It was 8. I mean, it was uh, KP4MAQ. Uh, minus 12. Now it's minus 4. So his signal is, is coming up. Now it's 2. So his signal is, is coming up. So the band is, is floating around, which is pretty common this time of day. It's 7 o'clock Eastern time. So the uh, sun is beginning to set, sets around 7.30. Yeah, he's not responding back. Normally, if the signals are strong, both directions, he'll come right back. The, the uh, CQ response will come right back with a signal report, but apparently we're not communicating. So let's try another one, KN4WGE. He's calling CQ, only 300 miles away. That doesn't mean anything because the band might be long, but let's just see 334 miles. Let's see if he's anywhere near. He's 66, uh, EM66. It might be South Carolina, I don't remember. I'm going to fire up QRZ 
and we'll look at some of these call signs to see about where they are at. Okay, the one that we wanted, it was uh, CU 5 AM. CU 5 AM. <laughs> he logged my connection. He logged my call. Right there it is. So he got me, uh, even though he didn't respond with a, with a, that's pretty cool. He logged my, uh, my, okay, what I'm looking for here is a map, and I don't see the map. So, yeah, two, uh, 2,838 miles. All right, let's, let's see. We haven't got any more activity here. Been calling this guy, no answer. So let's call this guy. EA1, that's 3,700 miles. EA1, I-E-Q. EA1, I-A-Q. Okay, somebody's using his call. If I got the right call, EA1IEQ. EA1IEQ. Yeah, he's silent key from Spain. So somebody's using his his call. And uh, he's no longer living according to QRZ. Interesting. Detail. Right in Madrid, Spain. Okay. Interesting. Somebody's using his call. I wonder if that's legit. So 3,700 miles of Spain. And no answer. But see, his tra he's transmitting at minus 22, so that doesn't surprise me. All right, here's a little one a little closer, KP4MAQ. Let's see if he responds. KP4MAQ. Puerto Rico. And almost all ocean for us. He's pretty close. And he's an extra class. And he responded. That's great. So he gave me a minus 10. So I'll give him a signal report now, R22. I got him at R minus 22. And now he should come back with a RR73. Band is really noisy. You can see from the fall uh, waterfall, they've got a high noise level. Okay. He... Uh, he gave me my report, but he's not getting uh, my answer, so we'll keep sending it and keeping an eye on the battery power. Transmit, it's right at 12 volts. Still transmitting this e EA1 IEQ response, and for some reason he's not getting it. And I'm at full power, 20 watts, I believe. Yeah, 20 watts and my antenna is tuned right on the money. Actually, this antenna is resonant at 20 meters. I beg you, uh, 40 meters. Hmm. 
just not getting through. That's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight attempts. And usually it's set for six attempts and then it's drop, it stops. WD9HYM, WD9HYM. Munster, Indiana. I know where that is. Yeah, Munster, Indiana. All right. So let's see if we can catch Mr. Munster here. So he's put out several CQs. And we're going to get, and he's, uh, his signal's up and down. Should be able to hit him, though. Yep. We got him. Minus four, which is good. That's a good signal. And I got him at eight. Minus eight. And then if everything works good, we should get an RR73 from him here in just a second. And we did. RR73. Okay, and then I'll send him a 73 back. That's not required but it is kind of nice to acknowledge the fact that you got his 73 and then sometimes they'll even come back with another 73 but since he's already done the 73 we're done all right so that was a successful contact and i you could do this all night long and, and the bands are up and down so you never know what you're going to get and you can tell from the noise level here that it's it's pretty crazy now i have the for some reason i have a preamp on and that is not necessary. Well, no, it's not. Okay, so the preamp is not turned on. With the preamp on, it would really boost the noise level. All right, the attenuation is on now. And that might help with the noise level on the receive. It's not going to help us on transmit. But you can see the difference on attenuation. The A up there. See how much better the noise level is. And there's the... The, uh, the signal that we're receiving right now at about an S8. We'll see when it stops what the noise level is. Noise level is, well, we could move off band here. Uh, noise level is about a, a three, bumping up. There's a little bit of static noise up. Uh, in fact, let's listen to it. Right, so you can hear the static. So good signal to noise ratio. Got a plus 10 or a 10 over uh, about a nine, a little over nine. A strong, strong signal coming in. That's why you can see all of this stuff going on here. And if I take the attenuation off, now you can hear a lot of noise, but the signals are still powerful, strong. So uh, signals are still very strong. And I have the AGC on automatic, which on receive really helps uh, clean up the, the uh, disparity between noise, signal and noise. Okay, so let's look at the radio itself. We're gonna stop and zoom in on the radio. All right, we're looking at the G90, Zygo G90, and a software defined radio. And a couple of things that are necessary, make sure I don't have any glare here. A couple of things that are necessary to set up for digital modes. The first thing is, is to hit this function key right here. It says function. And um, Make sure that the VOX is off. So function and volume, push the volume in one time and turn the VOX off. Otherwise, you're gonna get interference with the microphone. So the VOX is turned off and, um, and we don't set the gain, of course. All right, then function and um, power, function, power, sets the mic gain and that's the transmit power out the radio into uh, signal out to the antenna so i have mine set to um 10 and it works just fine 
So I have my gain set on 10. Um, so let's function, power, mic gain. Function, volume, VOX is turned off. They suggest, uh, they suggest, well, there we go. They suggest turning uh, compression off. So that little microphone indicator right there is compression. So you need to turn that off. And you can have attenuation on or off, depending on the condition of the band. That's up to you. Now, if you're not receiving data over here on the screen, then you may have attenuation set too high, and you need to back that off. Let's see. Um, okay, so that's basically it for the radio. So let's take a little closer look on the uh, software on the computer and the settings there. Now, again, we're on a Mac. So, are we still receiving? Yeah, I guess we are. Um, we need to go to, to this WSJTX preferences. So, all the way over to preferences and come over here to audio and make sure that your USB device is selected. And uh, I have done this manually with the microphone. There is no microphone jack on the Mac Airbook, the MacBook Air. The microphone is built into somewhere over here on the side and this, the headphone jack. So what I have done is I have hooked up the headphone jack. There's a cable that splits off using the interface and I've done it manually with the microphone on the Mac and it works fine. I mean, if you cough, you're interrupting with the sound of the, the uh, transmissions, but that's okay. In any case, the USB device is really your easiest way to connect. And you have these both. I have this set to mono and both. Mono and both. So the input is set to mono and the output is set to both. And those seem to work for me. So you want to experiment with those. You have choices, mono, right, left, uh, or both. And these work best for me. So that's the way it is. Now, you don't need radio control because the system is listening for the signal through the, the uh, interface cable on the, uh, the data connector. So you don't need to set up any kind of push to talk or anything. The software controls the radio and it, it, uh, when a signal comes through, it recognizes that there's a signal, this device does, and it keys up the microphone or keys up the transmitter. So you don't need any kind of rig set up. Um, and all these other settings are standard settings. There's not any kind of crazy settings whatsoever other than those that I just shared with you. So um, that's really all there is to it. Let's, uh, let's try again to uh, see if we can make a couple more contacts here. There's one more thing that I wanted to show you that you can do with uh, WSJTX. And that is if you come up to... Um, uh, let's see here. Where are we? Come up to save and click on save decoded. It will actually store the file in a text file for you. So then if you come over here to file, open log directory, open log directory, it will open up the directory of all the logs that the uh, that occurred with this this session and if you'll notice I've got highlighted all text highlighted and I saved it today at 730 if I double click that file all of the information that you experienced in this session will be listed there see so, well that's too much that's too much trouble and I don't know way of any sorting all of that. Well, all I have to do is do a command F, which is a search function. Command F for find. It's just like control F on a, on a regular uh, PC. And I put in my call sign there and it, it found 727 occurrences in all of this data. And if you'll notice, all of my call signs are highlighted in all of the QSOs. You can just scroll through 
and find them all there. They all in yellow or white, whatever. And um, each one is highlighted that you're currently connected to. And what you, the point is that then you can go back and log all of that information and the time and everything with the uh, QRZ or uh, around the world or whatever you're using for your um, your logbook. Okay. In case you can see the screen. Yeah. Okay. And all right, we got it's a lot of activity here. I've got the attenuator on, so I'm not getting a lot of that background noise. So let's double click on this one. Uh, 700 and, uh, 675 miles. K1 EFS. K1 EFS. And let's see who that is. K1 EFS. Virginia Beach, Virginia. So let's try a local one. It's already set up. I double clicked on the call sign, as you know, and it puts it over here in the standard messages. And when I start the sequence, it's gonna do this first one on the queue. And we'll click enable and it immediately starts to transmit. The enable TX doesn't actually start the transmit. The software manages that. So you don't have to worry about enabling TX at just the right time it knows when it's allowed to start transmitting in the sequence of events. There's one more important piece that you have to be aware of if you're doing FT8, and that is you must set the clock to universal correlated time. If you don't, the clock on the radio, I mean the clock in the FT8 world and the clock on the computer will be uh, will conflict with each other and you won't get data. All right, we've got a response. The Virginia Beach fellow responded with a signal of, of minus 12 dB. So I'm going to respond back to him with a response R-06, which is what I read him at. See that? I received his signal at minus 6. So he will respond back with a, if he gets that, yep. He responded back with an RR, Roger, Roger, 73. And now I'll respond to him with 73. So let's find another. We'll wait until this is done transmitting. Let's see. Um, here's one, 3,500 miles. E12 IV. EI2 IV. EI2 IV. E-I-2-I-V. Ireland. Okay, I don't think I have an Ireland. Maybe I do. Let's uh, let's uh, enable TX and let's see if we can get him. Ireland. That would be a good. That would be a good one to have in the logbook. And I'll log the Virginia Beach contact if he doesn't get it before I do. I hope we can get him. Now, so far, he didn't get us on the first pass. I picked him up at minus 18. That's getting kind of distant, kind of low. Fingers crossed that he's able to hear us. Yep, he got us. That's great. It's a good contact. I'm tickled with that. So he heard us from Ireland. So I'm going to send him back my signal report. Fingers crossed that he gets that. Got it. Got it. Okay, so we got the Ireland contact. All right, let's try one more. Mute. Uh, what's this one? 1800 miles. HP1RY. 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 Panama. Okay. See if we can get him. 
Manvel, Manvel, Eric. All right, enabled. HP One RY, Panama. He's almost directly south. 176 azimuth. And my antenna is a little better northwest southeast. Should be able to get him though. Yeah, somebody, already, somebody else already picked him up, so it's not going to interrupt. So it stops the transmit and lets this one finish. So we're going to jump right back in here. Wow, somebody really strong there. All right, let's try again. If the software detects that there's another QSO going on with HP1 RY, it will halt my, or it will interrupt my sequence because it wants to allow that user to manage that one CQ or that QSL, QSO, excuse me. And then once it's finished with that QSO, it will let me pick it back up. So I'm trying to get him now and uh, he's still waiting on an RR73 from this other caller. But that's the Zygu Software Defined Radio G90 talking on FT8. If you have any questions, um, I'd be delighted to try to answer them. I'm not an expert on the G90. I've got this is new to me, but I have had uh, a couple of years of experience with FT8. So uh, on the Mac. So if you have any questions. I've actually found the Mac to be easier to use than the, the Mac version of this software, easier to use than the, than the um, easier to set up than the PC. I, I've run it on both platforms. Okay, so we're not having much luck with the Panama uh, signal here, and it's given up on trying to reach them. So let's try one more here. I just said that a minute ago. I want to get one more successful. If we can catch... Uh, uh, CQ J, okay, here's one almost 2,000 miles J73 ESL J73 ESL Dominica. Okay, let's see where he is. Dominica is south east. Okay, so there's South America. And you can see uh, Puerto Rico is right there. And Dominica is just below Puerto Rico. So let's go back and see if we can get him. Uh, I'm not having much luck with southeast attempts. This is 134 azimuths, which is definitely southeast. But let's just see if he picks us up. Well, we got him. We got him. And a decent signal. Minus 10. We'll wait for an RR73. After he gets my signal report minus uh, my signal report of R minus ten. Still trying. 
Come on, guys. Okay, we're battery power. I don't know if I guess I have the battery power on the screen. Yeah, right there. 11, 11.9. Still putting out full 20 watts. Showing 12.1 volts here on the uh, radio. And let's keep trying. Got it. R R73. All right. Now we can say 73 to you all. Thank you for watching the G90 interface to FT8 on WSJT-X version 2.21. This is November 4, Kilo Romeo Oscar. Kent saying 73 to all.